IP version 4 has somewhat famously run out of IP addresses. We are out, we can no longer assign IP addresses, and believe it or not, this shortage was originally anticipated all the way back in the 1990s. The fact that we would not have enough addresses moving forward. And that's why, even within the 1990s, they started to develop IP version 6. IP version 6 actually released in 1998, if you can believe that. And so you might be looking at this situation and saying, well, that's not quite my understanding of it because these days, yeah, we're just now starting to run out of IP version 4 addresses and IP version 6 is something we're all still migrating to. How in the world, more than 20 years later, does this problem actually exist? If, if it really was addressed and identified 20 years ago, we should already be done with this. Well, the reality is that by the time IP version 6 came out, we had another solution. And this solution, which was originally meant as a stopgap, meaning that it was just supposed to help us last until IP version 6 came out, it ended up not just being a stopgap, it ended up really extending the life of IP version 4. And naturally, based on the skill, that solution is Network Address Translation, or NAT. So NAT came out, and again, created a situation where we didn't really need to migrate to IP version 6 very quickly. The idea here is that we would leverage NAT along with the concept of private addresses. So here's the situation. We have a network, let's say, of 200 hosts. And back before NAT and before IP version 6, these all needed to be public IP addresses. And so at the edge of our network, we'd have some kind of router or firewall, and this would connect us up to the internet. And so if I needed 200 public IP addresses, I would go out and request IP addresses. I would be given a class C uh, subnet, and this would contain the 256 or really 254 usable IP addresses. The problem, of course, is let's say I needed 300 hosts. Well, at that point, I couldn't do a class C I would have to get a class B address. And this class B address is you know, 65,535, it's about 65K addresses, even though I'm only going to use 300 of these. This is one of the problems in the early days of the internet and as far as why we went through IP addresses so quickly. And so we really didn't have a choice other than to go along with this type of paradigm up until NAT came out. What Nat said was, you know what, rather than using these public addresses and having to procure a class C or a class B set of public IP addresses, we would have our public addresses outside of the network, but inside we will use private addresses. And so now maybe we've got this public uh, set of addresses, maybe we've just got a single IP address on here. So maybe this is something like 25.1.2.3. So this is a public IP address. It belongs on this interface. And now all of these private uh, IP addresses and these hosts using the private addresses will be disguised out on the internet and they'll all appear as if they are 25.1.2.3. So when I send a packet out onto the internet and it lands on this internet server, the source address is actually going to appear as if it's 25.1.2.3. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So first of all, the big thing that we need to understand is that private addresses uh, do not exist on the internet. And so it's one thing to say that, all right, that's great and all that, we've got all these private addresses, um, but number one, they can't show up on the internet, which is why the server can't actually see that. But number two, we can all share these private addresses. In other words, I might have two different organizations, organization one and organization two, and I could have duplicate IP addresses. Organization one could be using the 10.1.1.0 subnet, let's say it's a slash 24 on their network. Well, guess what? Organization two can also use that exact same subnet. And the reason for that is because these subnets never actually show up on the internet. The internet must be a public address space. And so the idea here is that we're going to use NAT to again kind of create this disguise type of mechanism. We're going to disguise these private addresses 
as if they are public addresses, which allows me now to not need to go out and get public addresses for my network. Instead, I can rely on these private addresses for addressing all of the hosts on my network. So let's go ahead and jump into this concept of private addresses and really see which range of subnets that we can use uh, on the private side of things. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you want to brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.